Welcome back to What Are Tea Nibs with General Disturbance. This is the Emil 1, the Tier 8 Swedish heavy tank. It's located on the south spawn of Lakeville under the command of Mike 1963. Oh, and we've got no sound. I'll start this again. It'll be a brief start. Yeah, I'm afraid Wargaming still hasn't fixed their problem. That's better. Okay, this time round we've got engine noises. <laughs> it's, it's a better rat replay with the engine noise, I think. Okay, south spawn of Lake Bill, Mike 1963-1. And already we're seeing some pretty um, fruity language in chat. I won't repeat it, because obviously it's family-friendly channel. The enemy have got a T-49 in the list, the Fox, along the lake road, and they're taking pretty heavy damage. The Emil 1 was the first in a series of tanks under the Emil project in the 1950s. It's got a 105mm gun, which is capable of 360 Alpha, firing standard APCR 217mm of penetration with the premium rounds, that goes up to 242. Now, as you can see, Mike has thought about actually going into the town, helping his teammates out there, but I think what he's going to do instead is cover the valley. Nobody's gone up the far end of the valley. It's got a very strong front of the turrets on this uh, tank. Very, very heavy armour. 180 millimetres, if I remember correctly and 35 at the sides of the throat so that's where you can actually penetrate it 20 at the rear and in fact the first enemy tanks turned up and it's t57 heavy this is a tier 10 game he's tier 8 so he's bottom tier but he does have some pretty uh, good teammates with him unfortunately he just took a direct hit from an enemy 212 453 hit points lost yeah, that's a big hit. You can see it actually hit his engine bay. That's probably why it penetrated the armour. Yeah, there's a little hole directly underneath the turret. It's a very good shot by the RT. Very good shot indeed. I think he might have been aiming for the Gorilla 15 though, that was just alongside us. And he got us instead. Well, got Mike instead anyway. Okay, Fosh. Waiting for him to go across the gap. He didn't. But he's holding the gun there. Oh no, don't let the reticule bloom because you'll need it any second. That Fosh is just waiting to go through that gap. He's backing up a bit more to get a bit more cover. But yeah, you need to hold the reticule tight. It's a three shot autoloader with a 105. So he could get a sizable amount of damage if the enemy obliges. No, he's backing around the corner. He's not helping us at all. And I think the reason why Mike's pulling back a little is that he was worried that somebody might come along the lake road or he just thought these guys might see him. The Fosh is actually going towards that gap and it looks like the Waffentrager just got a shot into him. 475, I think the Waffentrager's got the short gun, not the long one, the 128. Because he only got 475. That's a low roll on a 490 hit. T44 looking to come around the corner. Oh, now Progetto. And he's easy to pen. He's now aimed at the TNH. You've got the houses in the way. Go back to the Progetto. He's angling to get through the corner. You can see his gun barrel. And he's been joined by a Leopard 1. For a brief moment, I thought those tanks were going to go straight across that gap. I'm pretty sure that Progetto is holding that corner at the moment. You know, use the Dread Eye Mind Chick. Yes! Oh, we hit the armor! But the Progetto did take a big hit from a high roll from the Waffentrager instead. T and H is a one shot. T44 will probably take two shots to kill. 
That leopard comes around this side. No, he's not. He's actually going back. Oh! Strip 103B. He might go through that gap any second. Well, he just pulled away just as the leopard was actually taking fire from the Waffentrager. And we've gone back to watching the front of the church. T44 is actually going up to the far end rather than coming around this side. I think we've just got too many tanks around this side and that's why they're not coming round. Yeah, we've got... And, oh, we just lost one of them, actually. We lost the uh, Striv K. T44 took a hit. I think that was from the guard. And the guard's gone. Taken out by the enemy T44 and returned. Yeah, Mike's holding... Oh, he missed the chance on the strip and the T-44. He's not paying attention because he actually go went to reload the APCR at the worst possible moment to go to reload. He could have had the T-44 for certain, I think, and, and the... Well, the strip 103 he would probably would have tracked him. But he went to reload and now he's still in reload mode. So, yeah, it just goes to show don't reload in this critical moment. And he misses the opportunity on the strip as well. Again. That guy circled the church. And he came back down again. Oh, don't. Don't miss your chance. And we lost the Grilla 15. He was guarding the valley. Now he actually went into the town. And that strip is still there. Don't miss your chance to get the kill. And the Leopard 1 looks like he's going to take out the Striv. And he has. Oh. Just goes to show Mike. Don't, you know, don't lose attention on your target. If you miss your opportunity, you end up with the battle getting no damage. He's actually done no damage at all yet in this game. And there's only four enemies left. Luckily, we've got a two-tank advantage. And the TNH-105-1000 is starting to come down the valley. So he might get a chance here to pick up some hit points. Now, he's kind of plonked himself down in a rather obvious and easy-to-spot position. He's been seen now, and he misses the TNH. He takes a ricochet, and he hits the rocks in return. I think the enemy 212A is going to be firing in this direction very shortly. So he needs to change position to avoid being hit by the enemy RT. He's trying to get a shot on that guy. Now the TNH might know that he's uh, an enemy of one. There's the RT round. Predictable, wasn't it? And he's been splashed this time because that was only 63 hit points. And I would have pumped the reload straight away once you pulled back because uh, you need three shells. You've only got one. This is not so good for Mike. Worst possible thing is you reload and then at the very moment you start your reload, you need your shells, you need your gun. Well, the Wizzy 111 GFT has actually gone up to the... Uh, further up the valley to the bottleneck area. At the moment, the enemy tortoise is holding back our guys. The Waffentrager's had to pull back because of him. There's a T-49. So the enemy have got a few more kills. And now... Oh, they just lost somebody. They lost the T-28 prototype. Uh, T-49, rather. Lost T-28 prototype. Took out the T-49, I should say. And Mike... Well, he's not, as you can see... He's, what he should be doing is should be a little further out like this when he's watching the tank so he can see it all around and then press his right hand mouse button and look behind him if he needs to and he really needs to help that wizzy 111 and i think that's that's what, exactly what he's going to do i wouldn't try go up that uh, ramp there go round yes you really need to look like this uh, most people some people go like this, but you don't get an all-round perspective of what's going on. Much easier to look at it from this sort of view. And then only go to sniper view by clicking your mouse button. 
in my case it's my middle mouse button so I can actually go to sniper view only when I need to actually make an, an aim shot and the TNH is gone which means there's only two enemies left a tortoise and their arty the 212A so we might have a chance to get some revenge on that guy for all the hit points he took off us I'm going to stay in holding uh, this in free camera mode at the moment so we get a better view of Mike as he's making his way down the valley. You can see it was quite an amazing shot there to get that shell to land on the engine deck. But I'm sure it was a uh, it was a definite uh, mishit. It was he was aiming for the griller and he got Mike instead. Don't get in the way of the whizzy. Uh, now here's your moment of glory. Take out the tortoise. Okay, and the 212A is coming to sight. We'll have him first. That's one shot. He won't be able to get the second one in, but he's taken the 212's health. He's not going to be very effective. The GW might get a chance to get a shot on him. Mike's only got two shells left for the tortoise, but he has taken a big hit. Aim for the... Always oh, tracked him. Aim for the lower plate. No, you go for the... The Capola on the top of the tortoise, that's the weak spot. And it also takes out his loader. And now he's having to load his three shells again. Standard reload is 26.43 seconds. The Mike's reload is 25.75. He's had to back off to get the reload in. But unfortunately we lost the Wizzy 111. And now it's two versus two. Oh Mike. <laughs> Yeah, I suppose this is a learning experience here for Mike. You've got to wait for that cupola on the top left-hand side of the tortoise. That's the weak spot. You can penetrate the lower plate of the tortoise if you've got enough penetration. A premium round would certainly do that, but uh, you better to aim for the cupola because it's nearly a, a penetration. Well, not every time, but most of the time. Okay, we're now going back to his view so that we can see as he must get this guy. Okay, front of the tortoise. Aim. Oh, he went for the lower. He went for the lower end again. He went for the lower plate. No, don't go for the lower plate. Not with this gun. And he's popped his reload. Okay, the two one two A's popped out. So at least he's going to get a chance to get that guy. Oh, and the two one two A's been taken down by the. Our GW Tiger who's come up to the this side of the valley and he's loaded but the GW Tiger is now in danger and the tortoise might go for him instead is he coming up behind us he's coming up behind us so the tortoise could actually try to go round and get at the GW Tiger it's not the Tiger P it's the tier 9 one and here comes the tiger uh, here comes the tortoise no you're aiming at the wrong spot. Go for the Capola. Oh, Mike. I feel for you here because you are making the wrong decision. But you're actually shooting the tracks. And hopefully the GW has pulled the back. No, the GW is trying to shotgun him. And he does shotgun him. But now the GW is going to take the punishment. He's just managing to pull back. Having lost some of his hit points in the... Tortoise is advancing to get the kill and now Mike has reloaded. Oh, we're going to have to give you some teaching lessons on how to attack a tortoise. He gets around through the side of the tortoise and kills him with an engine sh base shot. Yes, go for this cupola. That's the place there. That's the weak spot. If you hit the cupola, you take out his loader and he can't shoot you. Well, not as well. Here's the end of battle stats, and that was the third class tank of a Mike 1963-1 in the Emil one. Uh, one more small moment of glory, he says, but yeah, I think you aimed at the wrong target or the wrong spot on the on the enemy. Uh, well, yes, he did do some damage to the enemy. Let's have a look at team score. Unfortunately, he's way down the table on damage. He only did 931 hit points in the entire game. He missed the opportunity to hit the Striv and the T-44 in the town whilst he was sniping from back at his own cap area. Um, but uh, so the top scorer was the uh, 
the enemy tortoise with 5,894 hit points. Uh, the second highest was the T57 Heavy on his own team with 5,534. And the third highest damage was that TNH TVIS 51. When it came to kills, it was shared between the T57 Heavy Tank and the tortoise with four kills each. Three kills went to our GW Tiger who did survive the game. And two kills went to the T44 in the town. And when it came to base XP, it was the T57 Heavy who did the best with 1,061. The second highest went to the Tortoise with 895. And the third highest went to RGW Tiger with 860. And yes, he got three kills in that game. 200, uh, 2,226 hit points of damage. So yes, you were a very good uh, RT player in that game. Tank Is that Tanklander? I think that's his name. And Mike, well, Mike, 931 hit points of damage. One kill, the tortoise, the most important kill of the game, unfortunately. Uh, well, yes, but not unfortunately, but fortunately it was the most important kill. The last kill of the game. Uh, 821 on the XP. Uh, I think we just need to uh, teach you where you can get information on weak spots, enemy weak spots, so you can actually uh, see that for yourself. I'll see if I can actually help out during this video. Okay, so let's have a look at detail. 12 shots fired, 11 direct hits on the enemy, 3 penetrations. Yes, you were aiming at the lower plate. You should be aiming for the weak spot, the Capola. 931 hit points of damage, all of it done at close range. 3 hits received from the enemy, 2 pens, 2 hit hits by way of splash damage. One of those from the 212A. Uh, in fact, 2 of those from the 212A, I should say. 3 enemy vehicles damage, 1 killed, and 383 hit points of damage assistance. You earn 17,300 um, credits from the game, 12,975 from personal reserves, a total of 38,925. But after repairs, ammunition respawn, and yes, you did fire a fair amount of premium ammo towards the end of the game. You actually ended up with a loss of 20,712 uh, hit points. 821 base XP, one uh, hit points, credits. 1,232 experience points taken all together. Um, I'll show you the, the website that I use if you want to. Well, there's two websites you can use for learning weak spots. Okay, this is one of the sites which I do recommend. It's What Guru. Um, and you can find this at, uh, I'll bring up the URL, whatguru.com weak spot guides. Now, uh, why, are this, why is this important? Well, they do have uh, a number of weak spot guys for each tier, so you can actually look for the right uh, vehicle and tier, and it does explain where the weak spots are on the vehicle. I'm going through the list. Here's the T9 ones, and we need the tortoise, don't we? There we are, there's the tortoise one. So we bring up the tortoise guide, and you can see these photos that come up, um, which actually show you where the weak spots are and if i just click on one of those right now there you can see now don't aim for these spots because they're not part of the hitbox so you won't get any damage off those what we want is the green the best chance of penetration you can see they're very few and far between there's a bit around the gun mat there but it's very very difficult to hit you can probably overmatch the roof of the turret if you can get a 73 plus millimeter shell into it but the best spot of course is that little turret right there at the back of the vehicle that you can easily overmatch and um, penetrate and you will kill the loader if you do get a chance so uh, let's go to the next one because there's um, more than one view here's the side view of the tortoise we get that to come up sorry about all the adverts uh, there let's bring those down that's good okay the side you can see you can penetrate the engine bay area here and there are some spots here that will allow you to penetrate into the main vehicle but they're so few and far between because of course it's the tracks that are in the way uh it's probably not worth hitting this side of the vehicle let's go to the other view now this is the rear of the vehicle you can see anywhere on the rear of a tortoise other than the tracks of course is a an easy penetration for most tanks and again that that uh, capola which is the best spot to aim for of all and of course that takes us back to the uh, front of the vehicle but this is the area to aim for the little capola right on the top of the vehicle that's the way you can actually take out a, a tortoise and uh, so um there is another so spot that there is another 
page you can go to and I'll bring that one up as well because I regularly use um, Tanks GG. And of course if we go to Tanks GG we can see that um, on the tier 9s we've got the Tortoise and uh, what you can do is you can actually look at the 3D model and here's the model and you can see straight away that uh, if you're looking at a particular um, place to actually penetrate the effective armor here is very very weak it's very strong here here it's very difficult to hit the upper plate when the guy's looking straight at you but it's very easy to penetrate this area not so much that and uh, not so much the lower plate you're aiming for the lower plate virtually no chance of penetrating him the only way you can actually get a penetration on a tortoise when his lower plate is when he's on a rise and you can actually see his belly and then you can penetrate through his belly of his tank uh, but the best way to hit a tortoise is just to aim for this little cupola here and it'll easily take him out don't don't aim for the fronts or the flat plates they are strong points and don't aim for the wheel, the tracks because all that will do is keep him immobile for a few seconds but if you can aim for the tracks and get behind him then it's a different matter if you get behind him it's green it's everywhere there you're going to penetrate that so you will kill a tortoise that way but don't aim for the front armor don't aim for the lower plate unless you can accurately get a hit into his belly um just aim for this cupola and take him out that way if you enjoyed that uh, replay please give this video a like do subscribe to our channel leave a little comment down below because it feeds the out route oh he wants back up in the movies <laughs> and of course do remember that we've got a second channel called the general where you can watch great replays without any commentary whatsoever but you just see fantastic gameplay by players who are racking up the kills in, in masses and it actually teaches you how or where you can actually go to get the best results from your tank thanks for watching